What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's having a great week so far. So today, we're gonna talk about the Francisco Aguavilla Tumbao. Oh yeah. Y'all already know what day it is. It's Tutorial Thursdays. new subscribers welcome to a percussion life my name is Eric Perez some of you already know that by now but I just had to say thank you for subscribing and I do hope that you enjoy these videos and if you haven't subscribed already just hit that subscribe button hit that notification button find out whenever I'm uploading and yes we normally upload two videos per week every Monday and every Thursday sorry about Monday uh, feeling a little bit under the weather so uh, yeah just uh, need to take some time to rest. Sorry about that. To all my day ones, man, thank you so much for all the comments, all the support, sharing the videos, man, reaching out to me, making sure I'm okay. Really do appreciate it, man. I seriously, seriously always feel the love from you guys, so I appreciate you. So Francisco Aguavilla, man. <laughs> so many requests on this icon man on this legend trust me he is one that I was you know for a while I was trying to stay away from because he is just so iconic so legendary he was part of that wave where Armando and Mongo just just started coming from Cuba and just changing the music scene here in the US man so yeah g give me some time with this one because he is one that we need to seriously pay homage to man because he has he was probably the person that for me introduced me a lot to afro-cuban folkloric music within his music other than mongo because him and mongo kind of did that where they used their traditional music from kuwa to implement it and what they were playing here you know they would do a lot of like bata patterns in conga playing and, and they would kind of innovate it in that sense so when you would hear their music when you hear them playing you're like wait a minute uh that's uh that's not normal there what are you what are you doing right there and francisco alvia is responsible him mongo and armando those those three guys i would say you know apart from chano but but those three guys are the guys that i would say that deserve so much credit candido camero was part of that wave too on how they kind of played and, and, and changed the style of playing, especially on certain hits and certain touches that they would do. Like if you really want to know how iconic Francisco is, he's played with Dizzy Gillespie, Peggy Lee, Tito Puente, Cal Jada, Frank Sinatra. I mean, Frank Sinatra? This town. This town. He's played with Mongo Santa Maria, Chano Pozo, Carlos Santana, Eddie Palmieri. Dude, Francisco Aguavilla is responsible for a lot of those hit records, man. And and kind of, I don't know, he, he just brought this energy. Carlos Santana said a little clip about him. To me, the most important thing about Francisco is the spiritual inspiration that he teaches how music and spirituality are one and the same. I think we have to recognize that. The way he played, it was just different. Something that uh, impressed me, I remember I saw a video clip of a very young Giovanni Hidalgo playing with Eddie Palmieri. And it was Giovanni Hidalgo playing congas and then next to him was Francisco. And Giovanni and was unbelievably fast. Beautiful speed, crazy technique. But then right next to him and the person soloing right after him was Francisco. Any guy would probably be like, man, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be able to top this. And it was so different how he was able to communicate his solo after Giovanni's solo. Like that's, that's crazy to be able to do and speak and be able to transmit such an energy from just a couple of hits and th little touches that he would do. And something that I've always appreciated about Francisco is his iconic kind of like setup. He would always have a tumba to his right, conga as his main, and he would always have a quinto somewhere, either in front of him or right next to him to his left. And he would always just play and do certain riffs. It was just crazy how he was able to kind of like 
implement certain batat hits and do certain folkloric patterns in the middle of his solos. It was just crazy how he was able to just transmit certain things that you didn't see in like the 60s and 70s, man. You, you, you wouldn't see none of this stuff. Francisco Abobia as well released a couple of solo albums. Uh, when I mean a couple, I mean a couple. Like Orisa, Agua de Cuba, Cuba Can, Oshimini. Like, he has many more, but, and, and again, he was part of a lot of different recordings. If you listen to his music, he was able to introduce a lot of these folkloric patterns and music from Cuba and popularize it in a way that the average listener can somewhat understand the complexities that he's introducing. For some reason, and I don't know why, but when I talk to a lot of people about Francisco, they somehow don't recognize him. And maybe it was because Mongo Santa Maria was so popular. Maybe it was because Armando Peraza was so popular. I, I don't know. But a lot of people, like when, when you see this guy playing and you see this legend play, like this, this guy is responsible for a lot of things that, you know, people like Pedrito Martinez has now implemented, you know, using bata patterns and approaching bata on congas. Francisco was doing that in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, you know, th this guy was doing that a long time ago and sometimes we just forget. And this is why I'd like to do these videos because, you know, even though it's just a summary and a recap about the many things that they've done and Francisco's done so many things that I know if I keep on talking about it, it's gonna be a long video. But oftentimes it's needed just to have a little reminder of the greatness that existed. Uh, unfortunately, in 2010, uh, Francisco Alvia, the legend, the icon, uh, passed away due to cancer-related illness. Ah, cancer sucks, y'all. You know, when you see people that passed and the time that they lived in, it's like history. History kind of passes and people end up forgetting the greatness that, they, that was around. And maybe we didn't appreciate it as much when he was alive, but man, when he would play his hard hitting hands, the way he would approach it, the energy that he would bring, ah, it was just, it was just beautiful, man. And this Tumbao, uh, I noticed him do it a lot in a lot of his songs. <laughs> Kind of his unique way and you're gonna see a lot of slapping you're gonna see a lot of accented hits and you're also gonna see a lot of feel because francisco was that he he transmitted a lot of feel into his playing so you're gonna see different approaches and different things that i'm gonna try to do and try to simplify it so everybody can understand it in such a way so the tumbao i want to show you is this Francisco was a bad man. He's, He's a, a bad, bad man. man. So uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So to start the tumbao, what you're going to do is a bass with your non-dominant hand, not like in the center of the drum or towards the middle. You're gonna be more towards the edge. And there's a reason for that. If you ever notice Francisco, he would always kind of like hug the edge. He would really use kind of that type of movement, not so much move back and forth from here. So with your non-dominant hand, you're gonna do a bass, and then what you're going to do is bring it back and do a closed slap. So to show you, it's gonna be like this. After doing that closed slap, you're going to do a closed slap with your dominant hand. Now, if you ever notice how Francisco would kind of use that closed slap movement with his left hand, let me kind of show you what he would do. Um, he would lift up his index finger and kind of like pull the skin more. It's a very, very old school way. If you want to do it that way, it's very old school. Love it. It's beautiful. It gives a different tone. So just to kind of like let you hear the difference, it's going to sound like this.
I don't know if you can hear the difference. Here, I can hear the difference. I would say that when he lifts up his index finger, it sounds a little bit higher. After doing that close slap with your dominant hand, you're going to do a finger tap with your non-dominant hand, and then you're gonna go do a bass, and then what you're going to do is an open slap with your non-dominant hand. So it's gonna sound like this. So to put everything together up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. Then you're going to do two opens with your dominant hand. So to put that together. Now here comes, I would say, the feel or the tricky part of this tumbao. After doing those two opens, what you're going to do is just a ghost note or a finger tap with your dominant hand. And then with your non-dominant hand, you're gonna do two open slaps. So it's gonna sound like this. After doing those two open slaps with your non-dominant hand, you're going to do two opens on the tumba to your dominant side. Now to put everything together up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. Kinda crazy, huh? I'm trying to tell you, man, Francisco was all about feel. Now to finish the whole tumbao, after doing those two opens on the tumba, what you're going to do is an open slap with your non-dominant hand and then two opens with your dominant hand on the conga. Now to put everything together, it's gonna sound like this. So to play the whole thing through, it's gonna sound like this. to love it my goodness now to count it i'm going to count it very slowly to give you the hint that base that first base is going to be the one so to count it it's going to be like this Yeah, you got to love it. Just the placement on when he was doing it is just crazy. But thank you, Francisco Avia, for everything you have done to change the game when it comes to conga playing, incorporating batas into this, and, and just introducing us to new music and new ways to listen to music and to hear it and to feel it. So we appreciate you. We honor you, man. All right, y'all. Y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe. I will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend.